way moves. Turn with us tonight to the book of John. Keep worshiping the Lord. The book of John. We'd like to read from the 20th chapter. Then we'll go a couple other places and just follow with us. John chapter 20 and verse number 14. And when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing and knew not that it was Jesus. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She, supposing him to be the gardener, said unto him, Sir, if thou hast borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus saith unto her, Mary. She turned herself and said unto him, Rabbi I, which is to say, Master. She, Jesus saith unto her, Touch me not. I want you to pay attention to that. Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my Father. But, but go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my Father and your Father and to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things unto her. Here Jesus in this scripture, here he is, and Mary has stumbled upon him, supposing him to be the gardener. Hey man, I preached one time years ago on supposing him to be absent when he is present. Oh yes, oh I didn't think he was anywhere around. See this man and begin to inquire of him. Hey man, and thought he was the gardener and said, sir. If you'll tell me where you've taken him, I'll go and bear him thence. But the Bible said Jesus turned and said unto her, Mary. Hey man, nobody spoke like him. And then the Bible said that he said, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my Father. Hey man, now in the Matthew the 28th chapter, and in the ninth verse, we read where it says, And they went to tell his disciples, Behold, Jesus met them, saying, All hail. And they came and held him by his feet and worshipped him. Now we read to you in, in the, the book of John where it said, He told Mary, Touch me not. Touch me not, for I have not yet ascended to my Father. But here we see in the 28th chapter of Matthew that he said, uh, here again we read these coming. And the Bible said as they went uh, to tell his disciples. We've got Mary, Magdalene. We've got Mary. They're going. They're doing what he just commanded Mary to do. Go tell the brethren. And as she's going now, it says, and as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them. Oh, hallelujah. Saying, all hail. And they came and held him by his feet and worshipped him. One more scripture back to the book of John. Chapter number 7, verse 37. <coughs> In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the Scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believed on him should receive, for the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. I want to preach tonight if the Lord will help us on a glorified Savior. A glorified Savior. There's something about coming in contact with the, with the Lord. Amen. That you will never forget it. Amen. Oh, how many of us could tell the experiences of conviction when God came down maybe on our job 
or in our home or in a church. Amen. And God dealt with us and spoke to our hearts and all we could say. Uh, amen. And give our testimonies about how we would never forget. Amen. Never forget how my heart, amen, like to beat out of my chest. Never forget how that sweat rolled down my head. What was it? It was our first acquaintance with the Spirit of the Lord. Amen. Our first dealings, amen, with that triune Godhead. Amen. Our first dealings with His Spirit. And I can see where Jesus, when He was on earth, no doubt we look at His birth, and it was a miraculous birth. Oh, yes. Can you imagine a man born of a virgin, a woman who never knew a man? Somebody said that is scientifically impossible. Amen. Down home there was a large Methodist church, and there the pastor stood up several thousand people and told them, said, now for this older generation, said, we're going to let them keep right on believing in the virgin birth. Said, but for you of the younger generation, said, I want to tell you that it is a scientifically, amen, impossible for a man. Married to have been a virgin and said we're not going to accept that anymore. Well, I want to tell you according to the Bible, the Bible said that Mary never did know a man, but she was moved on by the Holy Ghost. And that angel said that one that you have, that holy child, amen, will come forth and thou shalt call his name Jesus. Oh, he had a he had a marvelous beginning. That's right, he had a amen a beginning that was miraculous. Amen. And we see that as he began to grow, we see there again how the Lord, Amen, moved on him. I read a book several years ago by the name of Ben Hur. Amen. And in that book was a scene I'll never forget. Amen. It told about this young Jewish boy by the name of Ben Hur who had been arrested and was being taken uh, back to Rome to be uh, ended up on a prison ship and said as Ben Hur was being drugged and pulled along in the old dusty sandy roads it came to a little village uh, amen in Nazareth and they stopped there uh, and said everyone gathered around and was really afraid to approach these Roman soldiers uh, but they said uh, 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 hallelujah Amen, Lou, or whatever his name was that wrote that book, Wallace, uh, he said in his writing, uh, he said that uh, there was a little, amen, Jewish boy, a carpenter's son, uh, and said he just walked right through the Roman soldiers, uh, just a lad of a boy. Come here and help me preach. Amen. Is your name Jerry Jr.? Amen. Uh, come here just a minute. Amen. Here come a little lad of a boy uh, walking right through all the Roman soldiers uh, and said he walked over and got some water. Uh, amen. Hold this water right here. Uh, and said he walked over there to where that Ben Hur was uh, and said he stooped down and he gave him some of that water. Uh, amen. And the book said, thank you, son, uh, that when Ben Hur uh, looked up into those eyes of that little boy, uh, he said he saw uh, love. Uh, he saw and faith. A strength returned to his body. I want to tell you, I know that's just a fictitious story, but I want to tell you, as his ministry began, as he was seen in the streets, as he began healing and raising the dead and restoring, amen, there was something about it, a friend that it died. You couldn't be the same after he's touched you. You'll never be the same. I said, you'll never be the same after he's touched you. Amen. Oh, yes. Jesus touched him. We see as his ministry goes on, all those that he touched. I know he was forsook at the cross. I know the crowd that just a few hours before that had cried and laid those palm branches before him. Amen. They were long gone. But I'll tell you what, wherever they were, there was something in their heart. They could not forget the touch of the Lord. Amen. Yes, we see Him. Amen. When He is apprehended. We see them taking Him in the garden. 
Amen. He is there praying until his sweat became as great drops of blood. He's weeping and crying and saying, Father, let this cup pass from me. But nevertheless, Father, not my will, but thy will be done. Amen. Oh, we see him as a Savior. We see him after he's apprehended. Amen. They take that precious, amen, Savior that we love so dear. They drug him out. Amen. And they begin to beat him. Amen. They took the scourge and they opened up, amen, his body with multiple, amen, beatings. I used to read that and I heard other people say it and used to preach that they used the cat of nine tails and that they gave him 39 stripes according to Jewish customs. But it was not the Jews who beat Jesus. It was the Romans. And the Romans did not have a limit. Amen. The Romans did not have a stopping place. They had beat and wounded and killed so many people uh, that they knew how uh, to bring a man to the very edge of death without killing him. Uh, Amen. They took him and laid him on that whipping stone. uh, And they took that scourge uh, and with the broken pieces of bone. uh, Amen. They wrapped it around his body uh, and opened up deep trenches. uh, Oh, they began to whip him. Uh, They put a crown of thorns upon his head and drove it deep down into his skull. They spat upon his face. Oh, what shame. Oh, what degradation. Is this the same man that was just a healing people? Is this the same man that they were a crying Hosanna to? Amen. Oh, yes. He's the same man. Amen. I said he's the same man. If we could behold him again. Amen. More than just a babe in a manger. But tonight if you could see him as the the Savior on Calvary with blood flowing from his body giving his life for you and me. Oh, is that... Amen. As they had beat him and they took him out there. Amen. Put him on that cross. Amen. Oh, I could preach right here two or three nights. Amen. But I'm trying to get on here. Amen. Yes, they crucified him. So he was a crucified Savior. That's right. He had a ministry. He had the birth. He had the ministry. He had the crucifixion. He cried out, It is finished. It is finished. I want to preach to you that was not the end. For we also had a resurrection. That's right. Hallelujah. And he also had a glorification, which is what I'm trying to get to tonight. Amen. Oh, yes. They take him out there and they put him in that tomb. They wrap his body with a hundred pounds, amen, of spices and myrrh. Amen. And these things, there they wrap him and they lay him in that borrowed tomb. Friday evening is approaching. The sun is about to go down. And hurriedly they are finishing their preparation. They're putting him in that tomb and they're rolling that great stone at the door. And there comes the quarantine of soldiers. Amen. They gather around and they begin to guard that door. They begin to guard that tomb. Amen. And make sure that nobody comes and steals his body. Amen. But oh, as time begin to roll on. Amen. On that first Easter morning. Amen. When the sun woke up the earth. Amen. All of a sudden, the Bible said a great while. Amen. Before day. Here comes Mary. Come here, Mary. Amen. Come on, Mary. Amen. And come on, you other Mary. Amen. Here comes these two Marys. Amen. They've got them some spices. Amen. They've come to anoint and finish preparing that body. Amen. Here they come now, coming to see that tomb. And maybe they're broken hearted and weeping. They're still upset. They're still worried. But as they're making their way and they begin to come, they stop. 
for they see, amen, all of a sudden that the stone has been rolled back. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, yes. And they begin to go a little faster as they come on. And they hurry over to that tomb. Amen. And they peer inside. Amen. Expecting maybe not knowing what to see. But when they look inside, amen, there sits an angel. Amen. Woo! Hallelujah. And the Bible said that there was his grave clothes. Amen. Folded and lying there. Amen. You know, they tell me that when you go to Jerusalem, that it's a Jewish custom. That when you get, uh, you sit down to eat, when you get up and you need to go, amen, maybe to the restroom or you need to go out for a little bit, if you're not through with your meal, they say you fold your napkin a certain way and you lay it on the side of your plate. And that's a sign I'll be back in just a little bit. Woo! Amen. Jesus, he was in a hurry, for he was to descend into the heart of the earth. Amen. Yes, he was in a hurry. He had a lot to do, but he was not in such a hurry that he did not fold that napkin and lay it to the side to say, hey, I'll be right back. Yes, and here these two Marys is looking. Amen. And all of a sudden, amen, they look over inside and see that angel. Amen. And that angel says, Why seek ye the living among the dead? Why seek ye the living among the dead? Amen. Oh, here they come out. I'm trying to hurry here. And they come out. And they're trying to make their way back. And here they see. Now we've got a resurrected Lord. I'll tell you, one of the greatest funerals I've ever been at in my life was my dad's funeral. Preached for years, pastored for years. Amen. And there when he had passed away, Amen. And our hearts was broken. My mom, I didn't think she could even go through with the funeral. Amen. Six, seven, eight hundred people gathered on a mid, on, during a weekday. Amen. Came from all across the country. Feel that building up, Brother Mike. Amen. They rolled that body out. Amen. My mom came in broken, couldn't hardly make it. I had to grab, help her and set her down. And she told me with her head on my a shoulder, she said, I cannot do this. I cannot do this. Amen. And I, I, she cried out. Amen. Not to me. She cried out. Lord, help me. A church, help me. And all of a sudden, you could hear the prayers of the saints all through the building. And the strength of the Holy Ghost began to come on her. They got up and got to singing, Brother Eugene Futchell. And some of them got up and got to singing. Hey, man, it's going to be wake up. Get up. Grave, get out of my way. Amen. Oh, come on here now. Amen. And all of a sudden, here went one of the elders, one of the deacons, across the front of the church, speaking in tongues. I went my brother-in-law stepping out. Amen. I went my mom with her hands lifted toward heaven and the glory of the Holy Ghost on her. I'm telling you, we was about to have a Holy Ghost right away, right in the middle of a funeral. Amen. Why? Well, Brother Don Rich preached my dad's funeral. Yeah. And uh, there we were. And I mean, it was like, it was about like it was a few minutes ago around here where you was just expecting any minute for the whole place to explode. That's right. And I mean, we were just sitting there, you know, standing there. Brother Rich come up to the microphone and he said, If you're wondering what's going on around this church in the middle of this funeral, he said, you're in the presence of people that have hope in the resurrection of the dead. I just cut me a jig. Hallelujah. Why? I'll see him again. Over on the other side, I'll see him again. That ain't the end. Hallelujah. He's a resurrected Savior. He's a
He's a resurrected Savior. But that's not all. For He is a glorified Savior. And He told them in the book of John, chapter 7, He said, Amen, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. You want me to tell you what will help you tonight to get in this altar and pray slap dab through to the experiences greater than you've ever had in your life. Amen. It's if you'll get your eyes off of everything else except His glorification. Amen. For He said, He spake this concerning the Holy Ghost, for the Holy Ghost had not yet came. For He was not yet glorified. Amen. But I believe this is when it happened, and you can disagree. But I see Jesus there, and here's Mary. And the Bible said that she thought He was a gardener. Yeah. Sir, if you'll tell me where you're taking Him, I'll, I'll go get Him and bury Him here. Amen. Amen. And Jesus just stopped. Oh, come on here now. Amen. And He said, Mary. <laughs> and when He did... Amen. Mary came and fell down. I, I can see her falling down, fixing to reach out and touch Him. And the Bible said, Jesus said, Touch me not. Can you imagine? Here she is. Is this a vision? Is this a dream? Is this real? Well, I'm fixing to grab a hold of this thing. I'm fixing to see if this is Him. Oh, how did He come out of that tomb? Amen. I believe He came out of that tomb. Hey Amen. Maybe his body still had scars. I don't know. But he came out of that tomb and there she beheld him. And as she reached for me, he said, Touch me not. But then we read in Matthew where it said that as they went to tell the brethren, go tell the brethren, as they went to tell the brethren, it said all of a sudden Jesus met them. Oh Hallelujah. Now hold on here. We just left him over yonder. Yeah, yeah. We turned our back on him on. and we went this way because he told us to go tell the brethren. But all of a sudden, Jesus met them. Yeah. Hallelujah. What happened between right yonder and right here? I'll tell you what I believe. I believe that Jesus, when they turned to go, amen, that he shot from this earth, amen, through the Milky Way. Way under through yonder sky. And his feet come sliding uh, down on those streets of gold. Uh, they had the trumpets ready. Uh, and they had the celebration ready. Uh, and then the Lamb has overcome. Uh, they're ready to celebrate. Uh, but Jesus comes sliding in there. Uh, and he says, Stop! <laughs> Stop! What is it? We're ready to go. you done it. You overcame. We're... Hold on! There's two women uh, uh, down yonder in the garden, uh, and they're wanting to worship me. Uh, hey, 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 hey. Uh, they're wanting to worship me. Uh, I'll be right back. Uh, oh, down he went. Uh, Slide all the way back down uh, and fell down on the other side of them. Uh, and the Bible said Mary fell down uh, and grabbed a hold of his feet uh, and worshiped him. Uh, I'll tell you what you need to do tonight. Uh, you need to see him uh, as a glorified. Hallelujah! You see, when he became glorified, you know the reason? Oh, oh. That you have been spinning your wheels? You know the reason you hadn't made it to the next level? You beheld him as a child. You beheld him as a crucified Savior. Thank God you did. You even beheld him as a resurrected Savior. But I want to tell you tonight... The next step is worship. Uh-huh. 
For there was ten lepers that was cleansed. All ten was cleansed. And as they turned, so the Bible said, Jesus said, go show yourself to the priest. And as they went, nine of them keeps going. One of them stops and turns back and comes back to Jesus. So I just want to tell you, thank you, Lord. I just want to worship you. Oh, wouldn't it be something tonight uh, if you just say, hey, uh, I just think I'll worship God tonight. Uh, what happened? Uh, the Bible said ten was cleansed. Uh, but it said, but that man went his way, uh, made completely, uh, ever went uh, whole. Uh, that means if leprosy uh, had eat off his arm, uh, God give him another arm. Uh, you say, Brother Steve, uh, I've been through a lot of hard things, uh, and I've been... Eat it. Uh, Brother Steve, I used to have more joy than I got now. Let me tell you how to get it back. Glorifying, worshiping, praising, fall down at his feet. I can see heaven. I can see the joy. He's overcome. I can see everything set. But Jesus came back and He said, Hey, the reason I went to earth, the reason I died, the reason that I was raised from the dead is that men might worship God. And there's two women. Where'd my women go? There's two women that's down yonder. Oh, that's a woman to worship me. Hallelujah. Amen, Sister Connie, Sister Patty. I love you. Let me tell you something. You do a great job, sister. You do a great job. But don't ever feel like that you can't leave the stool. Come on. Don't ever feel like, Sister Patty, when you start feeling something rolling over on the inside, that you can't lay down that mic. Somebody will say, well, she shouldn't do that. I'll tell you what. Hey, 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 hey. When you get ready to worship God, you'll lay the guitar down. Hey, you'll lay the baby down. Hey, you'll lay your old songbook down. And you'll say, I want God. I want to move with God. I want to move of the Holy Ghost. There ain't nothing better than seeing them uh, shout off the piano stool. Uh, there ain't nothing better. Uh, amen. Uh, oh. Sister Rochelle was probably about eight, seven and eight months, eight months expecting that child she's holding. We went up to Irondale, Alabama. Hey, man, preaching up there and loaded up a bus and took a bunch of our folks. Little old church, we had it packed out full. That night, my wife stepped into the realms of glorification. Woo! 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 Oh, and she come out of shouting and a dancing. Oh, come on now. Hey, man, one of them brothers run up to me and said, Hey, 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 Brother Steve, see you. I see you. Don't you think you better help her? Don't you think you better stop her? Well, come on here now. I said, Man, she's done it with every one of them. I said, I ain't a fixing to stop her now. Hey, man, that'll bring them into the world knowing there's a true God. Was it not John the Baptist that was filled with the Holy Ghost from his mother's womb? It wouldn't hurt some of you mamas. Hey, man, to hold them young ones in your arms while you're shouting down the aisle. Uh, while you're running around the pulpit, uh, it wouldn't hurt some of you daddies. Come on now. Let me tell you, we come. I, I, we're, we're fixing to pray. I'm not. God help me not to over preach this. Listen to me. Listen to me, daddies. I love you. But you know what we'll do? We'll sit there and we'll say, I can't get in because of this and that. Can't get in because I had to whip me on me. My nerves are shot. Okay, we all done it. Can't get in this reason, that reason. Yeah, come on. I'll tell you what tonight you need to do. Have confidence in, in the church. Listen to me. <laughs> Give your pastor authority. 
Do like this, everybody. Before I even tell you what I want you to do. <laughs> Give your pastor authority. Brother Mike, while I'm shouting, slain in the Spirit, amen, under the influence of the Holy Ghost, if my gila monsters are running the back of the pews, would you please hog time so I can whip him after church? Oh, come on. I can't get in because i got to hold my youngins. Everybody else said, but i got to hold my youngins. If you don't be careful, God will take your excuse out of the way. i tell you what to do. I've seen folks get the Holy Ghost with their children laying right underneath them. Wow. Nobody, that child would let nobody hold them. But Mama said, listen here. I'm going through and held that baby and rocked her while she prayed through to the Holy Ghost. Don't let nothing stop you to receive it from the Lord. I'm fixing to give you a chance to pray. Would you stand? Listen to me tonight. A glorified Savior. Could we behold Him tonight as a glorified Savior? Glorification when you get past what the devil's telling you, and you just begin to worship. You begin to, by faith, lay claim to what's yours. A man by the name of Ed Boyce was an evangelist for some type of group. He said in one of his books that years ago he had went down to a jeweler to purchase a diamond. He walked in and at this time in his life, he was very wealthy. Money was not an object. He went into this jeweler. He said, I want a diamond. I want a big diamond. And I, you know, I, I mean, I want a nice jewel. I'm going to put that up. I want that nice jewel. Just something I've always wanted. So the man asked him, said, well, do you want a diamond with a slight break in it? Amen. Do you want one with a very slight break in it? Or do you want one with a, with a break in it so small you have to use a microscope to find? <laughs> he said, you don't understand, sir. Money's no object. I want a diamond without a flaw. I don't want any crack in it whatsoever. And the man told him, said, well, sir, that's impossible. He said, there is no such thing thing as a diamond or any rock without a crack in it of some sort. So he left and he went back and he, he called some of his friends up in the colleges and some of his professors that he knew and every one of them said, that's right. He said, every rock has got a crack in it. Every diamond, every emerald, every jewel, they all got a crack. Hey man, somewhere. Amen. After I read this, I'd go outside and I'd pick up a rock. It might be muddy. I'd wash it off and I'd look. And sure enough, I'd always find a crack. That's right. Always got a crack. So he went to his pastor one day and he sat down. He was discouraged, about to give up on God. He sat down and he was talking to his pastor. He said, you know, I try to live right. I go to church. I worship the Lord, but it just seems like that the devil keeps telling me I'm not saved. Jesus didn't die for me and that he wasn't raised from the dead. He wasn't glorified. And that pastor told him, he said, Ed, you remember what you told me years ago about when you tried to purchase that diamond? He said, well, the Lord, I was reading a few days ago and the Lord showed me an answer to your question today. He said, the Bible said that when Christ died, that the rocks rent in twain. He said, Ed, I believe that every rock on the earth had a crack in it. When Christ died, he cracked them all to prove his power. Ned said from that day forward when he would feel like he wasn't saved, when he would feel like he didn't have the Holy Ghost, when he would feel like that he couldn't go no further, 
He said he'd just go down on the side of the road and dig down in the mud and get him an old rock and wash it off. He'd find that crack and he'd hold it up. And he'd say, hey, devil, look, you see this rock? I'm still saved. I want to tell you tonight, the devil's been a battle you. You know what you need to do? You need to come to this altar tonight and begin to glorify the Lord. Hold that rock up to God. Hold that rock up in the face of the devil and say, I'm still going on with God. I'm still going to worship God in this service tonight. Amen. How many would like to come right now? I'm opening the altar. Amen. Oh, you need the baptism. Amen. I'm going to tell you how you get it. Worship God. Worship Him with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind. Hey, man, if you're here not saved, why don't you come tonight? Hey, man, to be not saved is to be lost eternally in hell. Why don't you make a decision to come to Jesus? Hey, man, let's help these pray around the altar. I don't want to worship from afar. Draw me near.